Yeah, it's prolapsing. Why that came to mind, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't that what they measure, like, uh, babies coming out of? The rectum is what yeah. prolapses. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's dilating. Hi, I'm Rob Dom, and today you're cooking with Rob Dom. We're going to transform this beautiful M3, E56, E36, whatever BMW numbers I'm not familiar with, doesn't matter, because we're going to convert it into a new diff. We have the 36 to 7 teeth ring and pinion. It's not a very popular combination, but we're gonna make some beautiful noises and sounds with that, as well as all of these bearings meant for, well, there you go. One of them's there, another one goes on the other side, as well as seals. So we're gonna recondition this thing to the best of my ability. There's our custom front cover. Just barely big enough for the tight packaging for the all-wheel drive four-rotor. I'm gonna take this off, get the nasty gear oil out of it. And so the very first thing we need to take out, thankfully, I got this kit, is this piece right here. And it almost looks like, I don't know what that looks like. I know what I, know what I wanna say and I'm not gonna say it. I think the BMW German engineers put these two areas here and here for us to basically push that out of the way, bringing the rest of that ring inward, allowing us to remove it. But that is actually preventing you from getting a socket in here. And you can see somebody at some point tried to do that. It's not a very reusable design. It even brought that side out. The ring is actually ready to go that quickly. Okay, okay, I'm impressed. Ah, there we are. Time to get my nut. There we are. So you can already start seeing splines and those splines are no surprise. Those are the same ones right here. This is one of those things that you don't need until you absolutely need it and every place near you is closed. In this case, Tank Tools supplied this long ago and I'm like, I'm gonna need that someday. Not knowing that today is that day. Just Goldilocks that and then there. So simple. That would have been a struggle otherwise. We are going to reuse this, obviously. <laughs> I don't know how else we're gonna transmit power to the front diff, but that is, oh, ugh. This thing's filled with gear oil and you guys don't know my full story, but gear oil and I do not get along. The stock FD transmission, when you're 19 and don't know any better, as you pull it back, if you don't empty the gear oil, it pours out the back of the damn thing and right into your hair. And so I had this rat's nest of, of gear oil all in the back of my hair. I have the stock FD transmission, which I think weighs like 70, 80 pounds or whatever. I'm bench pressing that with no muscle at the time, whatever. And then just feeling this grease just go into the back of my head. So that smell makes me want to vomit. We are one step closer to rescuing the pinion from its current trap. Now this piece should be something like one of these. Those two are on each of the legs, so each of the wheels, and then this is the input right there. So again, we can actually trash this if we wanted it to be bad. And it, it trashed, it will be. <laughs> When you feel it getting close and then you're like, okay, wait, hang on, film, 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 film. And then you get that last shot. You can't take the pinion out without taking apart the rest of the diff. It's really impressive how that is. But take a look at this. One of the bearings right in there. That's the other side of this one. We're going to try really hard not to damage these, even though the nature of this process kind of damages the, the ones that are in there. This will be a press fit onto or inside of the case. And then this, of course, goes onto this piece here. So these might be the side ones, but you get, you get the point. So I was a little worried when I pulled that first one out. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at each of these different ones. Sure enough, this one right here, the one I grabbed next, is the one that will go in here. This piece actually threw me off because I was like, why do I need a new one? But it's all meant to work together. It just ends up being more work because now all of those pieces make a couple thousandths of a difference. And so this pinion is now no longer trust. We don't know where it is in three-dimensional space. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time assembling, disassembling, assembling, disassembling this thing just to get the position just right. I'm gonna go ahead and take this side off, but we need to get the oil out of here. There. Come out the back. Look at that. Right there. You see that? That's metal. It's beautiful. I bought this diff off of whatever, eBay, Craigslist, Grinder. I don't remember where I bought it from, but <laughs> there is definitely some, look at that, you can just see it pouring out some steel. It could have been from us. It could have been from the years that this thing's been ran prior to us, but mostly the burnouts. Ah, oh, very gritty. Not only do we have to worry about the ring and pinion, we also have to worry about the limited slip. 
one of these things is not like the others. We put a shit ton of sealant on this for good reason, because it's a custom piece. And there we are. That's where the fun stops. Actually, look at all that. I didn't do anything inside here. I took it and ran it. I want to put a sensor here, and that's actually a speed sensor. You could do a wheel speed sensor from there. We'll dig into the inside of that part, but all we care about right now is the ring and the pinion that's hidden behind it. We'll just continue on over here. Just spin it, it'll just help it out. Okay. There's the seal for that part right there, because that feels actually pretty flat. It's seen some shit. As much as I wish that's the only time we're gonna deal with those, we're gonna be putting that back on and off many times to get the shimming of this shit all squared away. But it's wild to think, look at that. That's, that's what's holding the diff in. So I'm a little worried, to be honest, that this case will break because we're going in reverse at all times. This car is actually going in reverse, doing several hundred horsepower instead of forward. So when you're going in reverse, you're actually putting pressure in the opposite direction. There's just an insane force all either way, so it's kind of screwed, but <laughs> trying to avoid cracking the case. Same thing on the opposite side. These are actually shims for this. Very important to keep these on the right side because it's weird to think about it, but if this is in further or back, then you're putting pressure on that race, on that bearing. Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow. You see that wear mark right in there? It's not really bad, bad, but that's, that's the race that we're gonna be replacing. That's what these bearings rotate against. But the point I'm trying to say is that you control the where the ring is based on how you shim these to the outside of the case. And yes, you can make a mistake and shim them both too tight, and then you binds up because now the bearings are turning into just vices. So you have to take one out of this side, add it to that side, and cha-cha. This is this side. This one is the other side. This really comes out relatively easy. There we go. It's a baby limited slip. I got a lot lighter. Really, replacing the ring is so much easier than you think because all you have to do is unbolt and rebolt these bolts when we're done. Sadly, it then changes where all the bearings, and of course we're gonna do the bearings anyway, so all of that changes. So it's funny, because upgrading or changing ring pinion is so simple, but yet not at all. It's pretty dirty. Yeah, what I'm about to do to it, it's gonna make it even dirtier. I'm sure maybe somebody somewhere has invented a better way, but you have to basically press it out, because this bearing is pressed in and that becomes a pain in the ass if you don't think ahead and how to resize this. But we're gonna just hope that the BMW is worn and tired. Just kidding, it's not. So the guys wanna try this. I know that the press will work, it's the easy way, but this is more fun, right? Nope. Yep, that's press time. <laughs> now we will keep this ring and pinion. I'm, I'm not attempting to damage it but keeping this ring of pinion is good for the high speed, 260 mile an hour stuff. So this does have a purpose. And it's just gonna slip. It. It. Yeah, it's prolapsing. Why that came to mind, I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't that what they measure like uh, babies coming out of? The rectum is what yeah. prolapses. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's dilating. Wow, dilated, that is, I was so close. Dilated, yeah. drowning, yeah. something wow. that's prolapsing. definitely not prolapsing. Okay. <laughs> Okay. This does kind of seem like it's prolapsing a little bit. There it goes. Wow, there go. Much better. With the same concept as the rest of the diff, we need to be able to adjust the position of this pinion between these two points. And it's not in my hands. This part is just kind of set as it is. You get what you get. So where is the adjustment? This is the part that sucks. The adjustment is here. We'll have to pull this race, and then there's another one on the inside. You literally have to, basically what we just did, disassemble the whole ring part to get back to the pinion to retest a new up and down and pull those, that's a nightmare. One thing that my buddy Dave that helped teach me how to rebuild the four rotor did was said, hey, use these bearings to help get yourself in the spot, but take them down a little bit so they slide in and out of the other one and now you've got, you don't have to keep pushing bearings in and out because remember, we, what we just did, we'd have to take it off and on in a bearing press each time we wanted to make an adjustment. 
how the hell does this oil smell like shit?